So we have a cloud architecture over here. Okay. We, we first of all has a broker system. Right. So I'll be first starting with the broker. All right. Yes. So I have a broker which is starting. Uh, the broker is running at port number 192.168.1.3. Right. Uh, I'm going to get connected with the broker so that uh, it can link to the services. Right. You know, I should also be signing into my SkyDrive account because this broker is a gateway to the uh <coughs> so if I'm not logged into SkyDrive it's going to ask me my credentials and it's going to ask whether I am agreeing to uh, get terms and conditions everything is fine if the login is successful it's going to take me to my sky drive okay uh, at the same time uh, it will show that the sky drive is connected right now I have a now this whole architecture is based on MQTT protocol and uh, uh, database management system called NoSQL system which is used in the uh, cloud lights. Okay, and I have used ready server for NoSQL system. So what happens is, first of all, uh, in the virtual machine, in each of the virtual machine, we need to, we need to, So I'm starting with totally three virtual machine. One I'm starting in this system also. I'm starting up one server in this system also. Okay. So every virtual machine will have the whole principle of uh, the cloudlet is that we need to keep the files in the uh, memory, running memory, not in the hard disk, such that we can access the file fast. And then we shall be connecting to the server okay now i'm going to connect to the uh, broker say my broker address is this address 192.168.1.3 so i should get connected with the broker so as it gets connected with the broker we should see that you know service broker has already received one request okay with a system with amount of memory it will keep on updating its memory periodically it will keep on telling the server by the meantime from the other system the other virtual uh, machine which is located at another system i'm going to start another virtual machine just get connected so this is its local server and i'll be connecting to broker which is 192.168.1.3 so, yeah, as I connected with the broker, in the broker system, you see, it shows that there are totally two virtual machines available right now, okay? And all of their memory map is also going to be available, okay? I'm starting the third virtual machine in one more system, which is at IP address 192.168.1.6, right? Now here also I need to run its own local ready storage to keep the files in the memory and then I need to connect it with 192.168.1.3 which is the address of the broker now you can see that the broker has also received a connection now it has got totally three virtual machines right now uh, let me have a simple text file created at uh, one particular virtual machine say for example let me create one text file at a remote system called hello Let's say this as cloudlet.txt. Right? Now let us upload this file from one of the local systems. Right? So let's just upload this file uh, 
by name say cloudlet.txt cloudlet.txt see you know once the file you can see once the file has been uploaded the file is basically split okay and systems will have different version of the file so what is the current version say cloudlet.txt is been now converted into two chunks okay one chunk is saved in 192.168.1.3 and another one is stored at 1.4 okay why 1.3 and 1.4 if you look carefully these two have the higher memory over 192.1.6 okay so therefore this two system has the two chunks now how do you understand what is the chunk now <coughs> this particular system over here see also have a data okay uh, that is this has saved in its local memory so how do you know that this file has been saved in the local memory right so what we can do is we can actually log into its local memory through something called redis client okay we can give key star we can give key star out of lot of files you can see one file by name files underscore where is cloudlet yeah you can see one file by name files underscore cloudlet dot txt underscore zero so if i show get cloudlet uh, get files underscore cloudlet dot txt underscore zero so it has got certain text hello cloudlet base okay <coughs> now my whole file was hello cloudlet based solution now in this particular system i have cloudlet base hello cloudlet base why a big portion of the memory is in is saved this is 192.168.1.3 it has got almost double the memory in respect to the other system which is connected so it has saved a bulk portion of the chunk in this virtual client a lesser amount of chunk in this virtual client now if i log into the other virtual client here also i can show the data in the memory directly that is if i log in Uh, keys star so it shows files underscore cloudlet dot txt underscore one get files underscore cloudlet it is case sensitive uh, cloudlet dot txt underscore uh, one okay solution so cloudlet base base up to e is there remaining is stored over here okay one in last character no, <coughs> now not only it is going to do that so now the file now the files are in the memory of the system okay this is a local cloudlet but the files is available directly at the ram level okay but at the same time what uh, the project does is it also split the files okay and it's going to put the files so my file was split into two parts both the parts separately has been saved at this kind of right let's see so uh, now we can see the files uh, what was the yeah you can see cloudlet uh, dot t cloudlet dot txt underscore zero if you click on this 
you'll be able to see the file exactly on the local SkyDrive. I can download and I can visualize, right? So two parts, both the parts have been saved in the SkyDrive, okay? Now, from a third system, from one more system, say, this particular system, uh, let me close down this. From this particular system, I'm going to generate an option called show files in cloud link. As I show, it is going to show the number of takes, which is, I mean, number of files which is available over here. The same thing I can show here also. So in the virtual machine, when I say show the files, the virtual machine is going to show the files that has been saved. However, the client who is trying to retrieve the file will not be shown what percentage is stored over where. Okay, it will he will be only shown with the number of files which is available. Now, let us assume. See, this is the so this is the broker, right? You can see that this memory is keep on getting changed in the real time as their memory is going to change. Now, what I'm going to do is. Now, this system 192.168.1.4 had chunk number 1. Yes. Alright. What I am going to do is, I am going to totally close this system. Okay. As I close this system, you see what happens is, it immediately gets updated there. Right. It, it immediately gets updated and that system is not there. Now, there is a problem. We have a file. See, look. I have a file which has got two copies, two, two versions, okay? One version is available locally. However, one version was available with a system which is no more connected. So now, let us try to retrieve this file from one more system. So for example, let us show, for example, from here, the virtual machine, let us just click this and let us say, download okay so as i say download so i have closed one virtual machine okay see it's going to show me immediately that one virtual machine is been closed right So see, <laughs> if I start my NoSQL server and connect to the server, connect to the broker, 192.168.1.3, connect, immediately it comes that new client has joined. Okay, I'll tell show the files in the cloud. Like it shows the file list. Okay, as I say, download. See, two chunks it is receiving directly. Okay, and the whole file is available over here. Hello, cloud led based system, isn't it? The whole file is now available over here. Uh, one file has been sent from 192.168.1.3, another is been sent from 1.4. Now, you try to understand what is the advantage uh, of the work that we have done. Generally, the data is acquired by the broker. They are combined and then that is pushed to the client which is requesting. I have done one more modification. That is, whoever requests for a, uh, whoever request for a uh, file, okay, server does not collect all the chunks, combine and send it. Server just tells those clients which are holding the text file to send them directly to the client. 
<laughs> See, in ideal cases, what happens is if the file size is big, yes. there are suppose five chunks. First, server has to tell all the virtual machines to send it all the chunks. It has to combine all the chunks and then it has to push those chunks into the, I mean, uh, correct line. But here, the modification that we have done is the server notifies the virtual machine to transmit its chunk directly to the client which is requesting. So the client receives the data directly from 192.168.1.3 which is that system, that virtual machine. 